Hello, my name is Andrew Shevchenko, I'm the CTO of Crocoblock. And at start I will tell just a few words about our company in case you are not familiar with our products. Uh, we develop WordPress plugins for various tasks and our main goal is to create an ecosystem in which the user with the help of one of our plugins can create their site from scratch, starting from the website structure to the design of individual pages. Uh, we specialize in dynamic content and have developed uh, over 20 plugins uh, that work with Block Editor, Elementor and Bricks Builder. Today we'll talk about some basic scenes. And by basic I mean the scenes you probably always do first when starting to work on a new website. So, at the initial stage of building any website, it can be represented as a data model where these operations take place. First one is collecting data, second storing data and third is retrieving data from the database. Uh, then we move to the second step and based on this model we are building an interaction between this data and the user, which includes displaying the stored data on the front end and performing operations with this data on the front end, such as an navigation search and filtering. On the next steps of website development we finalize it by refining design of elements and adding scenes like SEO, analytics, marketing and so on. And in many ways the first step defines how fast and optimized the final site will be. If some mistakes are made in the design of the data model in the beginning, then it's very difficult to correct them later. On this topic I remember the statement of Pippin Williamson, the creator of Easy Digital Downloads and many other plugins. Unfortunately, it was a long time ago and I couldn't find the original source. Anyway, the idea of the statement was that Pippin considered one of the biggest mistakes in the early stages of EDD development to be using a post plus post meta storage for handling or orders and other ADD service entities. Over time, ADD developers were able to overcome this problem and separate this data from default posts. Uh, WooCommerce is facing a similar problem and they have been working for a long time on moving orders from storage in post plus post meta tables to high performance order storage with separate tables. These examples show how crucial it is to organize your data structure properly from the start. So, in this presentation I will do my best to share recommendations on how to organize your data structure correctly and avoid mistakes. The first thing we should clarify is what data we need and where we need to have it. As an example, let's take the simplest case of an event agency website where people can view events and register for them. Here we have two entities, an event and a participant in the event. The event is an entity that should be displayed on the front end because users need to see a list of all events and register for them. The participant is an entity that only the website administrator should have access to and in the basic case there is no need to show it anywhere on the front end. So we came to the conclusion that some data may be required both on the front end and in the back end, while other data may be needed only in the admin area. So our first task is to organize the data in a way that the entities needed only in the admin area doesn't affect the performance of the front end. And now the next question here will be what tools at all do we have to store data? In WordPress these options are available. Custom post types plus post meta, then custom taxonomies plus term meta, then users plus user meta, then options and finally custom database tables. Uh, let's return to our example of events and participants. It's clear that events should be stored as a custom post type plus post meta since we need single event page, archives, search capabilities and so on. And the custom post types plus post meta combo is most suited for this kind of logic in WordPress. And what about participants? In the real world each event is likely to have several participants and the total number of them will be much larger than the number of events. Uh, the simplest approach is to store participants as custom post type plus post meta as well, 
However, in this case, first, we would store some unnecessary information about each participant that's only need for WordPress internal logic. Uh, considering the fact uh, that the number of participants will be much larger than the number of events, this would significantly increase the overall size of the database. And second, participants and events would be stored in the same database. And this increasing the size of these tables and slowing down queries to fetch events on the front end. So we discard this option. Custom taxonomies plus term meta also won't work. While in theory, based on data structure, these tables could be suitable, they won't fit from a logical standpoint. In WordPress, taxonomies and terms are intended to group custom post types and the entire admin UI is designed around this concept. Options are also clearly not suitable as this table isn't meant to store collections of similar data like we need in this case. Uh, users plus user meta is a possible option, uh, especially if we create a specific role for participants. However, the problem here is the same as for post meta is storing a lot of unnecessary default meta fields that WordPress core adds for every user. This leaves us with the last option, which also happens to be the best one. Custom tables. We can create a table with the exact set of columns we need and store all the data in a single table, which won't impact the size of other tables in our database. Let's look at the numbers to see if they support our assumptions. I simulated different data structure options for a website with 100 events and 1000 participants. Here what we found. In the case of custom post types plus post meta, we get big posts and post meta tables and that will affect the speed of all database queries related to posts. In the case of users plus user meta, there are compact tables of post and post meta since only events are stored there but there is a huge table of user meta because, as I already said, WordPress stores a lot of default metadata for each user. So we will have more optimized queries related to posts, but at the same time, there is a decrease in performance in all requests related to users. Also, in the case of users, we have a much larger total size of the database. And as I said, custom table is the best option. It stores only the data we need, which keeps its size minimal. All other tables also maintain the smallest necessary size. As a result, the entire database takes up significantly less space and all queries will be as fast as possible. If you look at tools which help us to work with uh, custom database tables, in the case of our JetEngine plugin, there is custom content types, on the example of which I did the simulation, and there are also other similar solutions on the market. And as a bonus could be a mixed option. We can store data in the post table, but make separate storage for meta fields. For our example, events metadata we store as usual, while for participants we would place metadata in a separate table. This table is specially designed to store participants' data and each meta field has its own column. Uh, this would reduce the overall size of the database and uh, partially separate event and uh, participant data. This approach is available in JetEngine, Metabox and not sure maybe in some other similar plugins. As we can see, this option is really something in the middle. Here we have a slightly smaller total database size and a smaller post meta table than when uh, it was stored as a normal post plus post meta combination but it's not as effective as a totally separate custom table. So now we separated the data, but as I said before, anyway, some of the data we will store as posts because the WordPress core is well optimized for handling it. Here we also face a choice, uh, how to store additional information. There are two options. First is post meta, which stores uh, any additional posts data structured as key value pairs. And second is taxonomies, which um, essentially classifies posts by various criteria. As we can see, these concepts serve different purposes, but in some cases they can be used similarly. Let's consider our example with events. An event could have a property like event format with options such as in-person, online or mixed. 
Technically, we could implement this either as an event format taxonomy or as an event format meta field with a predefined set of options in the UI. So which one should we choose? In theory, you should first differentiate uh, these properties based on their logic. If the property can group posts into specific categories, it should be a taxonomy. If the property provides additional information about the post, it should be a meta field. For example, event format is likely to be a taxonomy, while properties like price, short description or maximum number of participants should be a meta field. There are also special cases, for example, uh, the location could be either taxonomy or meta field depending on the specific requirements of the project. But now let's consider this question from the perspective of database structure optimization and query performance. We will use the same example with events agency uh, and let's add three properties, event category, event format and event type. Each of these uh, logically belongs to taxonomies, uh, but they could also be implemented as meta fields. We will check the efficiency of storing these properties as the taxonomies and meta fields, and we will compare these storage options based on three main criteria. Uh, first is overall database size, uh, second is query speed when retrieving a collection of posts uh, by these properties, and third is query speed when retrieving data for a single post. And again, I created two test websites, each of them contains uh, 500 events, each event has uh, one value of each property, and the conclusion by first criteria is that the total size of the database, uh, in the case of using the meta fields, is smaller, but only slightly smaller, on the other hand, in the case of taxonomies, uh, there is an advantage in uh, separated data storage. A large amount of data split between more tables, so overall has less effect on each table performance. Now let's compare selecting a group of events based on their properties. Uh, to do this, we will use uh, default WP query class and compare the speed of SQL queries it generates for both cases getting events by meta fields and getting events by taxonomy terms. Here we can see that the taxonomy case is a clear winner. In absolute numbers uh, the difference seems small, but in relative terms uh, it almost twice as fast. And the last uh, is getting the data on the single event page. Here we will use default repress functions to show the information about even category, format and type on the single event page. As we can see, the speed uh, is almost identical here, but uh, meta fields have a slight advantage, which is also reflected in the number of database queries. This is due to the specific way WordPress operates. It gets uh, all metadata for a specific post with a single database request. However, to fetch the information about the terms of a post, it makes additional queries for each taxonomy. So, as you can see, in terms of performance and database size, both methods of uh, data storage have their own advantages. That's why you should make your decision after deep analyzing your project requirements. And uh, let's highlight some key points to help you make that decision. If you need to work uh, with post collection, especially filtering this collection by specific properties, it's better to store most of the additional data as taxonomy terms. All properties that logically sue taxonomies or are borderline between taxonomies and meta fields should be stored as taxonomies. If your main goal is to optimize a single post page, it makes sense to use meta fields, even if by logic this data seems closer to taxonomies. Let's summarize our research with a set of criteria that your data structure should meet and a checklist for modeling this data structure. So, criteria are next. First, Minimize the size of stored data. Second, separate data for different entities into separate database tables each time when it's possible. And third, store data based on how you plan to use it later. And here is some kind of checklist on how to achieve this criteria. So, at first, based on your task, uh, define which data needs to be stored. It should be minimum uh, set of data to implement the task. 
do not store anything just in case. Then decide to where each piece of data belongs. If the data is not required on the front end, it's better to store it in custom tables. Next, the data that is required on the front end but does not use default WordPress logic such as single posts, archives and so on, should also be moved to custom database tables. The rest should be stored using default WordPress entities, posts, terms or users. Uh, for data needed on the front end and stored as posts, you can use mixed optimization methods uh, such as moving just metadata into separate table. Next, identify which data will be used uh, to retrieve posts from the database or filter them. All data used to retrieve or filter posts that logically fit taxonomies should be stored as taxonomy terms. And any remaining data that could not be separated in uh, custom database tables or taxonomies should be stored as uh, metadata. By following these steps, uh, we can be confident that we are building our website on a solid foundation where all data is organized as correctly as it possible within the WordPress infrastructure. You can find this checklist by this link. It also will be added into the description of this video on YouTube. I hope it could help you with your next project. Uh, that's all for today. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.